to give a warm welcome to all of you out there. My name is Renee and you're going to be watching a health video today. Believe it or not, God really does care about your health. In 2022, just about anywhere you look, sickness and disease are on the rise. In America, 4,000 times per day, someone has a heart attack. A new diabetic is discovered every 50 seconds and one out of four people have cancer. That's 25% of the American population. There's also a rise in the number of strokes per year, also gastrointestinal problems, arthritic conditions, lupus, multiple sclerosis, lung conditions, and many other things. The question is why? Well, many people believe God is to blame, unfortunately, but is that really the case? In the Bible, um, we're told in 3 John 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. And then in the Spirit of Prophecy, uh, we're told in Ministry of Healing, disease is an effort of nature to free the system from conditions that result from a violation of the laws of health. In the case of sickness, the cause should be ascertained. Unhealthful conditions should be changed, wrong habits corrected, then nature is to be assisted in her effort to expel impurities and to reestablish right conditions in the system. We're also told in the next paragraph, pure air, sunlight, abstemiousness, rest, exercise, proper diet, the use of water, trust in divine power, these are the two remedies. Every person should have a knowledge of nature's remedial agency and how to apply them. It is essential both to understand the principles involved in the treatment of the sick and to have a practical training that will enable one rightly to use this knowledge. <clears throat> we should also educate ourselves, we're told in Child Guidance, page 361, not only to live in harmony with the laws of health, but to teach others a better way. So that's my goal here today is to try to teach you uh, something better about one of the laws of health. And we need to become more intelligent on um, the laws of health. And we're told um, in the 11 manuscript release to become more intelligent in regard to the laws of life. So today I'm gonna to be covering the health law on exercise, the importance of getting exercise and which exercise is considered the best and the most optimal for overall health by the health experts. Um, we're told in uh, the Bible, in Luke 13, 33, I must walk today, tomorrow, and the day following. And uh, why, though? Why should we exercise? So that we may know how to preserve health, we're told, in MM 259.3. And then we're also told in Ministry of Healing, page 128, paragraph 1, it is the duty of every person for his own sake and for the sake of humanity to inform himself in regard to the laws of life and to conscientiously obey them. We are to apply the laws of life and health to our own case in violating the laws of health. Even when doing the service of God, you misrepresent your maker. And that's in KC 20, paragraph four. The Councils on Health, page 261 says, proper exercise is one of God's physicians. Healthful Living, page 132, paragraph 2 says, Healthy, active exercise is what you need. This will invigorate the mind. There will be increased vitality, which is so necessary to health, it says in the next paragraph. And then the following paragraph says, Not only will the organs of the body be strengthened by exercise, but the mind also will acquire strength and knowledge through the action of these organs. 
And the more we exercise, the better will be the circulation of the blood. Healthful Living, page 132, paragraph 5 says. And then paragraph 8 says, Judicious exercise will induce the blood to the surface and thus relieve the internal organs. It will promote circulation, giving a healthful glow to the skin and sending blood vitalized by pure air to the extremities. By judicious exercise, they may expand the chest and strengthen the muscles. Healthful Living 133, paragraph 1. Then in 2T, 533, paragraph 1, it says, Moderate exercise every day will impart strength to the muscles, which without exercise become flabby and enfeebled. In a short time, you will realize the benefits of exercise and pure air that you would not live without these blessings. SPM 137 paragraph 2 says, Physical exercise, thus in simple language, we may teach the people how to preserve health and how to avoid sickness. Uh, health Reformer, August 1st, 1873, paragraph 14 says, I have learned by experience that if we would have health, we must take a proper amount of exercise, active exercise. So we need to educate regarding proper exercise. We're told in Councils on Diet and Foods, page 406, paragraph 4, education should be given on proper exercise. Now, what type of exercise is best? Well, we're told in Testimonies of the Church, volume 3, page 78, walking in all cases where it is possible is the best remedy for diseased bodies because in this exercise, all the organs of the body are brought into use. 3T78, paragraph 2 says, by it, referring to exercise, the circulation of the blood is greatly improved. Healthful Living, page 177, paragraph 1 says, A walk would be more beneficial to the health than all the medicine that doctors may prescribe. Wow, did you hear that? Just a walk is more beneficial to us than what all the doctors could prescribe as far as medicine goes. And another quote says, uh, HL 130, paragraph 2, there is no exercise that will prove as beneficial to every part of the body as walking. Active walking in the open air will do more for women to preserve them in health if they are well than any other means. Walking is also one of the most efficient remedies for the recovery of health of the invalid. The hands and arms are exercise as well as the limbs. Now, this is also supported by medical science. The wonderful thing about walking is that you're not damaging your joints and ligaments by any hard impacts. And best of all, walking isn't even expensive to do, it's free. And it doesn't have to be done vigorously. A brisk walk is effective, brisk enough to where you can still talk, but barely sing. Be sure to erect your shoulders back and move your arms as you go. And if you do start walking every day, be sure to get a good pair of walking shoes, possibly some shoe inserts if you're going to be walking on hard surfaces too. Now, the second best thing to walking is gardening. Um, gardening, believe it or not, you use every muscle of your body when you are gardening. And house cleaning, washing walls are also great exercises, but you want to make sure you go out every day and walk unless it's raining or snowing. Even in the cold, you can dress warm and get moving. Now, here's some information on walking. Exercise lowers your blood sugar uh, levels even if there isn't any weight loss. Light physical activity helps you to sleep better at night and lack of exercise can disrupt your body's uh, circadian rhythm. Uh, decreased physical activity worsens uh, for COPD and too much sitting causes anxiety. Now, walking in all cases where possible is the best remedy for diseased bodies, we said, um, because we can improve our circulation and it's more beneficial to health than all the other medicines, any medicine that any doctor could prescribe. So walking is very beneficial for our health and very much needed. Now, what about running? 
Many people like to run and they run every day. Well, medical science is now showing that running on a regular basis can produce what's called a runner's heart. It's, it's an enlarged heart and um, it can have a very negative effect on your joints, tendons, and ligaments. It's best for adults only to run when necessary during a flight or fight situation, like if you're late for a flight or you're running from a fire or a wild animal, things like that. Now, another thing that's very popular is weightlifting. So we're told in three manuscript release, page 366, paragraph one, weightlifting and lung expansion is the title. And it says, I was instructed that there is great danger of overdoing the lift cure. There is the lift cure, 3MR366 continues, this many suppose is doing a great deal of good. It may be if this is not overdone, but the result has been presented to me. The muscles of some never recover. A strain that is unnatural is brought to bear upon the sinews, muscles, and nerves, which the machinery was not made to endure. Continuing on the same uh, book, uh, next page, 367, there is to be no violent or unnatural strain put upon the human machinery, for all the works are very delicate. There is such a thing as injuring the vital organs when the human agent does not understand how or when. So how can we strengthen our muscles then? Well, we're told in HR, August 1, paragraph 13, 1873, in order to strengthen the arms and chest, we have taken excellent movements in scrubbing woodwork, sweeping floors, washing dishes, washing clothing upon the old fashioned rubbing board, which we would recommend as a far better instrument to strengthen the arms and chest than back breaking washing machines. We take uh, the next paragraph, paragraph 14 says, we take movements to strengthen the ankles and muscles of the limbs in climbing the mountains, prospecting and gathering flowers. And frequently we descend with our arms loaded with broken wood, which is scattered plentiful among, upon the mountains. We are becoming strong by healthful exercise. We enjoy physical exercise after close application to writing several hours every day. We sometimes become weary, but we rest and sleep well through the night. And in the morning, we feel fresh and ready for the next day duty. So when should we walk and what time of day is considered the best time for exercise? 2T 529 paragraph one says, when the weather will permit, all who can possibly do so ought to walk in the open air every day, summer and winter. But the clothing should be suitable for exercise and the feet should be well protected. ML 136 paragraph five says, morning exercise in walking in the free invigorating air of heaven or cultivating flowers, small fruits and vegetables is necessary to a healthful circulation of the blood. It is the surest safeguard against colds, coughs, congestion of brain and lungs, inflammation of the liver, the kidneys and the lungs and a hundred other diseases. It is shown that early morning exercise while the sun has been up for just a bit is the best. One of the main reasons has to do with the quality of the air that you will be breathing during exercise. In the early morning hours, all the pollution has settled through the night. Therefore, the air is a better quality. Now, we're also told to walk um, after your meal. Uh, Councils on Diet and Foods, page 103 says, a short walk after a meal with your head erect and the shoulders back, exercising moderately is a great benefit. 2T530 paragraph one says, exercise will aid the word of di work of digestion. To walk out after a meal, hold the head erect, put back the shoulders and exercise moderately will be a great benefit. Also, um, HL177 paragraph one says, a walk even in winter would be more beneficial to the health than all the medicine doctors can prescribe. We talked about that earlier. And also uh, 2T529 paragraph one says, when the weather will permit, all who can possibly do so 
ought to walk in the open air every day, summer and winter, but the clothing should be suitable for the exercise and feet well protected. Sometimes you have to put on double layers, maybe even triple layers to go outside and walk when it's really cold. But once you get moving, trust me, you're gonna warm up and probably end up taking a layer off. Now, where should we walk? Um, well, we already talked about some of that. 3T78 says should practice exercising outdoors in while we walk. And um, ML136 paragraph four says those who accustom themselves to proper exercise in the open air will generally have good and vigorous circulation. And then ML136 paragraph six says, go out and exercise in the open air every day, even though some things indoors may have to be neglected. So why outdoors? Well, we're told to in 2T533 paragraph one, by active exercise in the open air every day, the liver, kidneys, and lungs will be strengthened to perform their work. It will bring to your aid the power of the will, which will resist the cold and give energy to the nervous system. Well, why not in a gym like a 24-hour fitness, you know, and places like that where you can go and get a membership and belong to a gym? Well, we're told in HL 142, paragraph 2, rooms that are not freely ventilated daily are not fit for use, not admitting pure air and the rays of the sun. It is dangerous to health and life until the outside air shall have circulated through them for several hours. Every room should be thoroughly ventilated every single day. Every room should be daily thrown open to the healthful rays of the sun and the purifying air should be invited in. This will be a preventative of disease. The confined air of unventilated rooms meets us with sickening odors of mildew and the impurities exhaled by its inmates they're poisonous to the system. Note, studies show that exercise outdoors in the sunshine can strengthen your heart a hundred times more than working out in a gym. And according to the studies, exercising outdoors has a more positive effect on our heart too. Nothing compares to exercising outdoors in the fresh air, exposing yourself to all the negative ions as possible. Exercise in a closed gym, especially those that aren't aired out and let the sunshine in them on a frequent basis can actually cause problems due to the excess carbon dioxide breathed in from all the other people exercising in the gym as well. As said before, be sure to dress in the colder months better and in the hotter months, you carry water with you at all times and put a wet towel even over your head to keep your head from overheating. Now, how should you walk? HR November 1, 1880 says taking a brisk walk in the open air. Uh, brisk yet not violent exercise in the open air with cheerfulness of spirits will promote the circulation, giving a healthful glow to the skin and sending the blood vitalized by the pure air to the extremities. That's 2T 530 paragraph two. Well, why not violent exercise? We're told in Councils on Diet and Foods, page 103, to engage in deep study or violent exercise immediately after eating hinders the digestive process. Uh, so too much exercise too quickly is more dangerous than no exercise at all. Now, according to Lee Wellard at Wildwood Lifestyle Center, when a person exercises too vigorously, the body can even produce blood clots and it will affect um, affect you and um, you uh, also have an enzyme that has a role in blood clotting, uh, clotting so when that gets affected it can even lead to a heart attack. Remember 1 Corinthians 9 25 every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things and this does include exercise. Now how much walking should we do and how often should a person exercise? Well, HR, August 1st, 1873 says proper exercise daily. And those who would enjoy the blessings of health and strength must have a proper amount of exercise daily. It is to be said that 30 minutes a day, three to four times a day was sufficient. I mean, excuse me, three to four times a week. However, in the last couple of years, medical research has shown that even that amount is not enough. 
in order to have optimal health and truly see diseases like heart disease, diabetes, obesity, and many others subside, 60 minutes a day, at least six days a week is essential. Now, some may not be able to start out at that amount, but you can um, learn, I'll teach you later on, how to start to work up to that time. Now, HR April 1, 1872 says, hours should be spent each day in walking or in working in the open air when the weather will permit. So now if a person walks two to three miles a day, plus you walk about 10 to 15 minutes after each meal for your digestion walk, and you do some other outdoor work in the garden or raking leaves or whatever you have to do outside, you can get a minimum of a two hours of outdoor exercise. But again, you only have to have an hour, but it's easy to get that. So uh, we should be getting 10,000 steps per day minimum. Research shows people who set a goal of 10,000 steps get more exercise than those who walk briskly for 30 minutes a day. Plus, you don't have to do it all at once. You know, you can fit in those extra steps throughout your routine and you can uh, do 20 minutes three times a day very easily. You just want to get that heart rate up. So um, 20 minutes at least is, is a good amount of time to, to um, exercise. And you could do that three times a day or you could do 30 minutes twice a day. Now, in order to keep track of how many steps you take, you can get a pedometer. They sell them, you know, at Walmart and other places. And you can clip that right to your clothes uh, while you walk. Or you can get a Fitbit or an Apple Watch, and, and they keep track of that too nowadays. It, they're really great tools to help you um, to know that you're getting enough steps in. And um, now I'm going to tell you what happens when we don't exercise. Well, we're told in ML 136, uh, paragraph 3, it is the inaction of the human machinery that brings suffering and disease. ML 136, paragraph 4 says more people die for want of exercise than over fatigue. Very many more rust out than wear out. CT 307, paragraph 2 says without physical exercise, no one can have vigorous health. 3T78 says, in some cases, want of exercise causes the bowels and muscles to become enfeebled and shrunken. And these organs that have become enfeebled, enfeebled for want of use will be strengthened by exercise. Then 3T76 says, they fear they will be made worse if they labor or exercise when this is just the change they need to make them well. Without this, they can never improve. Wow, did you hear that? They will never improve if they do not exercise. That is exactly what we need. Now, 3T76 says, neglecting to exercise the entire body or a portion of it will bring on morbid conditions. Inaction of any of the organs of the body will be followed by a decrease in size and strength of the muscles and will cause the blood to flow sluggishly through the blood vessels. And that is one way that blood clots form. Now, what about ministers, teachers, and students? Well, Councils on Health, page 572 says, ministers, teachers, and students do not become as intelligent as they should in regard to the necessity of exercise in the open air. They neglect this duty, which is most essential for the preservation of health. They closely apply their minds to books and eat the allowance of a laboring man. Under such habits, some grow corpulent because the system is clogged. Others become lean, feeble, and weak because their vital powers are exhausted in throwing off the excess of food. The liver becomes burdened and unable to throw off the impurities in the blood and sickness is the result. We're also told in HL 132 paragraph one, if they worked intelligently, giving both mind and body a due share of exercise, ministers would not so readily succumb to disease. Now, what about the sick? SPM 137 paragraph two says, there's a work to be done in treating the sick with water and teaching them to make the most of sunshine 
and physical exercise. Thus, in simple language, we may teach the people how to preserve health and how to avoid sickness. CH 200 says those who are feeble and indolent should not yield to their inclination to be inactive, thus depriving themselves of the open air and sunlight, but should practice exercising out of doors and walking or working in the garden. 2T 528 says if invalids, invalids would recover health, they should not discontinue physical exercise. So those who have sedentary lives definitely need exercise. Now, there's some other quotes too, and CD444 says health requires regular exercise. 2T413 says exercise is necessary for a healthy condition of the mind. And then ML150 paragraph four says exercise is a powerful agent in the recovery of health. MM225 paragraph one says, the sick should be educated to have confidence in nature's great blessings which God has provided. And the most effective remedies for disease are pure soft water, the blessed God-given sunshine coming into the rooms of the invalids, living outdoors as much as possible, having healthful exercise, eating and drinking foods that are prepared in the most healthful manner. Now, here's uh, something else to know about exercise. CT 308 paragraph two says, the greatest benefit is not gained from exercise that is taken as play or exercise merely. There is some benefit in being in the fresh air and from the exercise of the muscles, but let the same amount of energy be given to the performance of useful work and the benefit will be greater. So, we were talking about um, uh, walk, when to walk. Another time to walk is before breakfast. Uh, LS 1915, page 168 says, we were taking our usual walk before breakfast. Uh, 1T 464 says, I walked briskly from one to two miles before breakfast. And another quote, RH, February 20, 1866, paragraph 10 says, we rose in the morning at five o'clock to take our usual walk before breakfast. Now I do remember that Sister White talked about how she ate breakfast at one o'clock. So I guess she's out walking at five o'clock. Now, like I said here, you may wonder how could I ever walk that much? Well, you just increase it a little by little every day. So if you're not accustomed to walking, you know, just start out with what you can do. Maybe you can only do 10 minutes a day, let's say. So then tomorrow, let's say you walk 10 minutes today, tomorrow walk 11 or 12 minutes. Just add another minute or two and do that for a couple days and then add a couple more minutes and keep adding a couple more minutes and you'll slowly work up to being able to walk uh, that 60 minutes a day. And you know, here's a quote even, it says in MH 240 paragraph one, he may be able to do but little at first but he will soon find his strength increasing and the amount of work done can be increased accordingly. So there's a promise. If you just start out doing what you can do, you can increase it little by little. Medical Ministry, page 223 says, there is now positive need, even with physicians, reformers in the line of treatment of disease, that greater painstaking effort be made to carry forward and upward the work for themselves and to interestingly instruct those to look to them for medical skill to ascertain the cause of their infirmities. They should call their attention in a special manner to the laws which God has established, which cannot be violated with impunity. They dwell much on the working of disease, but do not as a general rule arouse the attention to the laws which must be sacredly and intelligently obeyed to prevent disease. Now I'm going to give you some benefits of exercising. And I'm going to go through these. There's quite a list. Um, blood circulation equalized. It's quickened, expels impurities. The body organs are strengthened. The bowels are strengthened. The brain is relieved of weariness. Digestion is aided. Disease prevented. Diseased persons helped. Diseased stomach relieved. Digestion organs given. 
uh, healthy tone, entire human system invigorated, girls improved in mind and study, gives life and strength to invalids, kidneys are strengthened, the liver is strengthened, your lungs are kept in good condition, your lungs are strengthened, your mind is healthfully influenced, your muscles are given tone and strengthened, you recover from sickness better, it's a good remedy for disease, your skin has a healthful glow, your waste matter accumulating in the system is worked off, and youth are protected from secret vice, the blood is sent to extremities, uh, it's beneficial in treating colds, and nerves of sick people are benefited by it, and to regain body heat is good to exercise, and your sleep is induced. And all of those things can be found in the Spirit of Prophecy, and I have all the references too. Um, now who needs exercise? Well, brain workers do, children, doctors, indoor workers, invalids, ministers, uh, people working indoors, uh, persons of sedentary habits, school children, sick people, uh, the mentally ill, speakers, students, teachers, young women, youth, and those whose bodies are normally cold. What happens when we don't exercise? All our bowels and muscles become enfeebled and shrunken, depresses the blood circulation, the blood becomes impure, children become sick, the limbs are weakened, mental breakdown can take place by not having a balance of study and exercise, your muscles become flabby, your nervous system becomes imbalanced, skin problems result, veins become ill-affected, the lung problems, heart problems, kidney problems, arthritic problems, gloomy feelings, and increases the risk of all types of cancer. One thing I want to mention now is that medical science is now showing that those vigorous exercises you see a lot of shows focusing on is actually more harmful to your health than beneficial. Research shows that vigorous exercise can actually cause blood clots. And if you listen to the news ever, many drop dead in the middle of a very vigorous exercise program. Be sure to consult with your physician before starting any exercise program. Now here's a few more things you need to know. Walking by many physicians is considered to be better than any medicine for most common diseases. So if you have high blood sugar, walk. If you have blood pressure, walk. If you have arthritis, walk. Oh yes, and for those who can't walk 60 minutes a day, like I said before, just start out with as much as you can do and increase it little by little. And by the way, if it's snowing or raining outside, stair climbing is an excellent exercise that you can do indoors. Just go up and down your stairs, if you have them in your house, of course, for about five or 10 minutes and try doing that two or three times a day. Also, rebounding on a little mini trampoline is excellent uh, for flow, uh, lymph, and fighting uh, disease. <clears throat> Just step on it and walk. Bounce a little too without removing your feet from the tarp. But once again, I need to tell you, consult your physician before starting any exercise program. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, medical science confirms what the Spirit of Prophecy tells us regarding exercise. We're told in the Spirit of Prophecy that um, exercise relieves arthritic pain, cuts prostate cancer deaths, helps fight the flu, lowers colon and cancer risk, prevents disease, and lowers breast cancer risk. And I have links for all of those. And other articles um, talking about the benefits of exercise. Uh, calories are burned per minute by of exercise by weight, and that covers doing laundry, running errands, gardening, etc. Uh, 10,000 steps a day, as I mentioned before, can offer long-term benefits. Exercise in your middle age even, it's never too late. If you haven't ever done it, start now, it's okay. Harvard School of Public Health has a whole study on the body and the benefits of exercise. Relieve arthritis pain uh, is put out by Harvard Health Publication and how much exercise you need and how your, even your memory loss can be reversed by exercising. Now, um, like I said, it's never too late. And so uh, I have links for all these articles, more on medical science articles about exercise and walking and, and how to start uh, exercising even in your middle age and how much calories are burned and and all the science articles on exercise and walking um, those links will all be provided and 
Uh, also, um, you can read a book about walking and what it does for the body. And that book is called The Doctor's Walking Book and How to Walk Your Way to Fitness and Health. And that's by Fred A. Stutman, S-T-U-T-M-A-N, and he's a medical doctor. Now, if you'd like more information regarding the importance of exercise, especially walking, <clears throat> you can just go online and do a Google search and check out all the articles for yourself. Well, that's our time for today. I hope that what you've heard on here will be a blessing to you and your family. And until next time, may the good Lord bless you and keep you in good health. And remember, God loves you and he wants you to be in health.